The season is over for the Braves. What are we gonna do? This is Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it's time for the Atlanta Baseball Party, only on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Atlanta Baseball Party, your home for the best Atlanta Braves baseball talk. It's local insight. You can't get anywhere, but right here at Locked On, I'm your host, Tanitra Batista. Alongside me is Jarvis Davis, and this episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rival city. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. And the Atlanta Baseball Party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So will we see 13 on 3, 27, 25? We'll discuss. And who will AA decide to not bring back? We'll talk about that too. But first, let's talk about the end of a long journey in 2024, the Braves' 2024 season ended with a sweep in the wild card round by the San Diego Padres. So, Jarvis, let me ask you first: for you, was it a was it a disappointment? No, to be honest with you, because coming to the season, everybody was talking about being a World Series contender, right? You're talking about AJ Minter, you know, everybody you talked to in the clubhouse coming into the season. Hey, we're contending for a World Series, and Chris Sale knew what it was when he came here. This when they traded, when they decided to trade for him, and you know, got into the clubhouse and starting to look around, like, oh, all right, yeah, we're good. So yeah, let's 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 go out here and try to win. And as that been, and he was really consistent with what his goal was coming into here, uh, coming into this season. So for me, mm-hmm. I feel like once the injuries start to mount up, right? You talking about you know, uh, Ronald Acuna, Spencer Strider going down after his second start you know, of the season and those things start to accumulate, you start to really feel that, okay, we may have a chance to still get into the playoffs. And that's exactly what the Braves did. They got into Mm -hmm. the playoffs. Now, granted, it took the whole 162 to do it, (laughs) but but they were able to get in there and do what they needed to do. So for me, I, I feel like, you know, the expectations were met, you know, given what happened in the beginning of the season. And for me, it felt like a season. You talk about it being long. It felt like it was 374 games yeah. <laughs> because of all the injuries and everybody, you know, being hurt and Sean Murphy going down, Michael Harris going down, you know, and that opening day lineup was something that we never saw yeah. <laughs> after, after the that, that opening day. So for me, it's just – it's just a, a combination of a lot of things, right? You know, expectations have to be changed because of the injuries. And then the season just seeming like it would never end because of all the injuries that they had to deal with. And then the the one that just really just broke my heart when we found out Chris Sale wasn't going to pitch be able to pitch in the wild card round. I was just like, right, okay. Right. Of course. You're riding this roller coaster, baby, and I'm on it. Just I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just here so I won't be fine. <laughs> And you were so consistent with that in the last month and a half or so of the baseball season. You talked about it on the baseball party. You talked about it on the sports party that, hey, you were just going to ride the ride and enjoy the ride when it was up. Be okay when the ride was down. Be okay when you didn't know whether the ride was going to be up or down. And I think that that kind of set the stage for where the rest of us kind of landed as well, where I was like, you know, Jarvis might be on to something because we already know it's going to be a roller coaster the rest of the way, whether the roller coaster rides into the postseason or whether the roller coaster stops on the last day of the regular season. So I kind of adopted your mantra and that's the way it helped me to get through. And that's probably why I can say the same, that I'm not disappointed because man, you fought to the bitter end. You fought to the bitter end. So with all of the adversity and like you said we even talked about the fact that there was was there any position of the nine where nobody ever 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 got injured and i believe the answer was no so when you think about the fact that every position there was an injury at some sort or somebody had to take off more than one day if you will even if they weren't put on the il that so speaks volumes about why you shouldn't be disappointed about how this season turned out because you couldn't have asked for anything more than for the Braves to fight, fight, fight. And of course, for them to do it in typical Braves Mets fashion, where 
the Mets actually won that second to last game of the season to punch their ticket into the postseason. But then the Braves came through your heart stopping, but they still came through in the last game of the regular season. But then I would say, too, that you look at the the adversity and then it kind of makes you think, hmm, so what does that kind of mean for you know what we're going to see next season? And speaking of that, Max Fried, he got really emotional when he was asked about potentially playing his last game in a Braves uniform. And unfortunately, he didn't end that well being the 5-4 loss of the Padres. That was a game where we saw Max pitch two innings, just two innings, gave up five runs, only struck out two. But to quote Max Fried, he said, I've absolutely loved every minute of it and hope to have many more. So now that the season is officially, officially over, what does your gut tell you about whether or not we're going to see Max Fried here again or whether or not how that free agency will just play out for him overall? I, I think my, my gut tells me the same thing is going to happen that has happened previously, right? You're talking about Dansby Swanson walking out the door, Freddie Freeman, who is a Hall of Famer. Uh, he can he could have retired after being a Brave, and, and he was going into the Hall of Fame, in my humble opinion. So, um, so you can take that for what it's worth. But I think that <laughs> when you think about him being so close with those guys, right? Mm-hmm. Him being the, coming up in the, through the organization with those guys and, and specifically Austin Riley and, and him kind of looking at that situation as well. It's just like, oh, man, mm-hmm. like these guys end up walking out of the door. I mean, shoot, more than, what, what's makes, what makes me so special? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. that's, that's a tough question that you have to ask. And as a competitor, you probably won't ask himself that. But I can look at this situation and say, you know what? If they let these if they let these cats go go walk out of the door, you know, Freddie Freeman, you know, you know, being from the West Coast and then Dansby being from here, you know, and and, and, doing, and doing and doing what he was able to do. Yeah. They traded for him as well. So all of those things kind of come into place. And I'm sure that a lot of those thoughts that he had, you know, saying that, hey, this is probably my last time. And, and then for me, my gut tells me it is. Yeah. And I just think that the unfortunate part about it. Which and it's hard. The unfortunate part about it is being a Braves fan that mm-hmm. you have to accept this, right? And we have to accept that all of the names and guys that you know are going to walk out the door because mm-hmm. you know yeah. that the Braves have an excellent scouting department. You know that they know how to breed talent and and have an eye for you know getting these pitchers in here and guys that know. You know the guys gonna come in and perform, and you know guys like Ronald Cooney and all that stuff. Like it's just think about it from this standpoint, T. Yeah, yeah. Ronald Cooney gonna be a free agent here in a little bit. You know, right? I was just gonna have to say, all right, all right, okay. Nephew gonna go out the door. What? It's what? a legitimate question, right? So, so that's the unfortunate part because I can get you know it kind of Freddie Freeman getting up there in age and all that stuff. I can you can kind of sell me on you know Dansby Swanson. Oh, yeah, he, he was fine. You know, it was cool. You know, what I'm saying you can figure it out if you got all yeah, these other yeah. guys on the contract. But oh my gosh, what's gonna happen when nephew comes up for his free agent contract? You think I'm gonna be sitting over here saying, "Well, you know, my gut tells me they're gonna let him walk." What? You better dog on figure all that money out. That find all that money you got over there, um, buried over there by the battery, and, and dog on and dog on pay this man. Because yeah. I'm not accepting that, you know what I'm saying? But it just, it just, it just sucks that as a Braves fan that I have to accept guys, really good baseball players walking out of the door just because you know they have this annual A average salary, average V, whatever V O F O V, whatever it is, T that they they won't go over because they just right. don't see the value in it. Man, bump that. <laughs> right. Although Alex Anthopoulos kind of said something that maybe gave you pseudo encouragement, if it's on pseudo encouragement, because he True. did say that they were willing and prepared to spend more in the upcoming season. Now, we will see what the definition of spend more is for the next season. But ultimately, I think, yes, all of us, maybe even at the beginning of the season when we know that uh, the arbitration, I believe, led to like the one year, like $15 million deal, if you will. We kind of knew, OK, this is coming and had a whole season to kind of prepare for it. And some of the MLB insiders have said as recently as a week ago that Freed is kind of ranked fifth among all the free agents 
in Major League Baseball for 2025, third among pitchers. And they're kind of seeing him walking as well with potential fits for among other teams, the Chicago Cubs, the San Diego Padres, and the Texas Rangers being like the top fits for him. So Mm -hmm. when you think about MLB insiders who follow this trend and follow this much more intimately, you have to kind of lean in that direction, coupled with what we who follow the Braves intimately and on a daily basis know that uh, Liberty Media has done, like you said, to a, a true franchise player like pr- player like a Freddie Freeman and a homegrown player like a Dansby Swanson. And then you kind of look at the fact that, hey, not saying that any of these are a Max Free, but you will have hopefully a better healthier Bryce Elder and A.J. smith Shaver, and maybe finally a re-sighting of Ian Anderson. So hopefully mm-hmm. somewhere in there between those pitchers in that rotation who will come back and be healthy in 2025, if they part ways with Max, which we believe they actually will, then ultimately speaking, while we may not do it, if we were the GMs, we do understand what Alex Anthopoulos is up against and the fact that, A, he still has a nice little roster that he can work with and B, you know him. He's always going to go out and find the next Chris Sale, if you will, for this organization for next year. Now, when we come back, we'll talk about whether or not we think we're going to see 13 on 3 25 We'll get into that in Going Deep. This episode of our Atlanta baseball party is brought to you by FanDuel. So we are going into week six of the NFL season. I cannot believe we're saying that because I can't believe that the season has already progressed to what essentially amounts to a third of the season. But we're here, but you can still also get big returns on FanDuel even a third of the way through the season because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, and it might not even take the middle of the game this coming Sunday. Real talk when the Atlanta Falcons travel to take on the Carolina Panthers. But if you happen to get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play by play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bet. So you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. Again, you could start the season or continue it with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You might get a hunch in the middle of a game that, hmm, will the Vikings or hmm, will the Chiefs continue to be those teams that are undefeated past week six, past week seven, past <laughs> beyond midway through the season? Don't forget, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play. If you have that hunch in the middle of the game and so much more on the same page where you place the bet. So, Get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place that first $5 bet at FanDuel.com because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And what does that look like for you? Well, it's a curation that makes it easier to save not just on sports, but for concerts, comedy, theater, and more where you can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy Also, they have a lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference and your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Now terms do apply, but create that account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today because what time is it? It's game time. So our own Grant McCauley posted a photo of Ronald Acuna Jr. doing lunges in the Braves training room recently as part of his rehab program for his torn Achilles. Now, Jarvis, all signs point to Acuna Jr. taking maybe a different approach to his recovery considering the fact that he's had to miss so much time in the last four years with a couple of Achilles injuries. And Acuna Jr. low-key kind of hinted at maybe a fewer stolen bases, maybe focusing a little bit more on contributing more with his bat and even kind of reshifting how he thinks about his health. But for you, is it realistic to expect to see Ronald Acuna Jr. on March 27 of 2025 when the Braves travel to take on the San Diego Padres at Petco Park? Uh, excuse me. I don't see it. I I don't see him being ready at that moment. And even if I, even if he is ready, I feel like the Braves are going to use caution. Um, because when you think about coming off of this, 
uh, the injury last time, you know, there was some struggles. We talked, yeah. we had plenty of yeah. conversations about he just doesn't look like himself. So my, my thing is you already have some, you know, options. You know, I know we're going to get into the Braves picking up options in the offseason in the next segment, but uh, you already have some some uh, uh, a nice backup plan, you know, yeah. to, to kind of hold things down until he's fully 100 percent healthy. And I think that the Braves should use that precaution. And I feel like they are. They're leaning towards that because Alex Anthopoulos talked about how. You know, hey, maybe in May, maybe, you know, sometime in June, you know, <laughs> you know, we, we, we don't know. We'll yeah, figure it out yeah. once, once we get here. So, yeah, yeah I, I think they're, they're going to use as much precaution as possible because going through what they went through this this season, just I feel like they kind of taught them a lot of things. Just like, all right, we, we had to really figure it out to be able to get 89 wins. Once these guys come back and that Spencer Strider included in that category as well. We got to make sure that we have a set plan for these guys. So when they come back, we don't want the possibility of re-injuring, you know, anything that they got going on. We want that to be minimal as possible. So I feel like they're going to, they're going to, he's not going to be on opening day and they're going to use precaution as they go along because it's going to be hard to hold a guy like nephew back, but I feel like they're going to let him know like, Hey man, we don't need anything happening like like what happened last year because we're going to need you for the long stretch run. Yeah, and I point to a Michael Harris II as well, the hamstring injury, the hand injury. I thought that the Braves did a great job, and even, even Ozzie Albee's injury, I thought they did a great job of being very patient and very cautious. And you could have seen them rushing those guys back as the pressure mounted on will they get in the, to the postseason? Won't they get in? They need help at the at the plate. But they didn't rush him back. And I think it paid dividends because we saw what a healthy MH2 looked like for the back half of the season. We saw what a healthy Ozzy always looked back when he was able to come back and hit that critical home run to help the Braves continue to put themselves in position for the postseason. Your franchise player, your reigning NL MVP, a guy who, to your earlier point, had to deal with coming back from that right ACL tear in 2021 came back at 266 after having a 283 average the season before. So, yeah, you absolutely know what it looks like when you bring Ronald Acuna Jr., or really any player back, when you rush that player and they come back too soon, as opposed to, hey, now that he's torn that left ACL, tore it back in May, you can afford to give him an entire year. We all know in the baseball world that the season really starts after Memorial Day anyway. True. Give that man all the time that he needs. You miraculously got through a myriad of injuries this year that went far beyond the Ronald Acuna Jr. Like you said, it started for Sp with Spencer Strider. And then, mm -hmm. oh, my God, the, the symmetry of it all. It starts with an ace of a pitcher, and it ends with an ace of a pitcher who's probably going to win the Cy Young Award. That's the season you've had. So you already kind of know what it looks like in order to be able to piecemeal things together if you need to. And so, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think they should rush Ronald Acuna Jr. back, nor do I think they will. Now, speaking of, like you said, there have been oh, um, They got a $16 million backup insurance plan in, in uh, Jorge Soler. You yeah, know, they got another going, year yeah. on the contract. So I feel like that's even more reason for it. Like, hey, man, take your time. Make sure you're 100% healthy. Then we'll get you on a, a, a rehab, get you on a schedule for a rehab and, 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 and work or and just work it out as we go through. So because – you know, that's why you built all this depth this year. And so, you know, when when these guys start to come back and people start making their way back, you can have that as an option to to kind of kind of help you bridge that gap between 75, 80 percent. Hey, I can play versus to 100 percent. Hey, I'm ready to go. I'm fully healthy and I'm fully confident in my knee and I'm ready to roll. Yeah. And I think Jorge Soler, I know we were going to ask that question about him and whether or not. Alex Anthopoulos might look to trade Soler, and I think it really depends on what yeah. he sees in Ronald Acuna throughout the offseason as far as his rehab goes. And the good thing is there's no rush on having to trade him. I mean, if you need right. to keep him, say, all the way even to the all-star break, you can do that. And I'm sure you yeah. can make the proper decisions Alex Anthopoulos can to ensure that, hey, Jorge Soler, thank you for your service. We've got our MVP back. We're ready to move on. And again, we know Alex Anthopoulos. If it doesn't work out with Jorge Soler, 
he will find someone in the offseason if he feels the need to in order to make sure that there's somebody there to take on right field and somebody to give some juice at the plate while the team awaits the return of Ronald Acuna Jr. Speaking of double A, he's got some decisions to make other than Ronald Acuna Jr. and Jorge Soler on who he will or won't bring back. We'll talk about that in the stretch. This episode of our Atlanta Baseball Party is brought to you by Booking.com. So Booking.com, Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rival. So Booking today on Booking.com is a good look because it's the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. So you can explore those U.S. cities you always secret, secretly wanted to learn more about. And I know we don't like talking about it on this show, but Philly's not a bad look. You don't have to go to Philadelphia to see the Phillies, but you might want to go to check out Philadelphia. There are some pretty cool things in that city with hotels, bed and breakfasts, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball rival city during postseason. Maybe it's time to test your baseball competition stadium cuisine. Luckily on booking.com, you can find the stadium stay that's just right for you. Maybe you want to go to Dodger Stadium. Maybe that'll be a little bit cooler because it's LA. With Booking.com's wide variety of choices across the U.S., you can go incognito to all your baseball rival cities. And Booking.com delivers exactly the right U.S. stay for you. So the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. Booking.com, go ahead and download that app Because from hotels that look over stadiums to family-friendly resorts to cute bed and breakfast days, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. Because it's Booking.com, Booking. Yeah. So, drivers, the Braves have some decisions to make when it comes to picking up the options of Marcelo Zuna, Travis Darno, and Aaron Bummer. Do you foresee... Alex Anthopoulos not picking up any of those options? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> he will pick up all of those options because when you think <laughs> about all of those guys, because with Sean Murphy and the way he struggled this year, you know, Travis Darno was the guy that, will, that gave you a little hope when he came to play and when he was behind the plate or whatever. So um, I, I think that, you know, it goes back to what, we, what we've been saying. I feel like it's been a constant theme on this on this show is the fact that, you know, that depth is something that you have to have specifically yeah, for this yeah. team. We saw how that played out this year. So, yeah, he's definitely not going anywhere. Uh, uh, there's no reason for them not to pick up the option for the guy who led your team in average home runs and RBIs yeah. <laughs> and Marcelo Zuna, the guy who was the only consistent batter. Us. Captain Saber, you know what? Um, throughout the entirety of the season, yes, yes, he did do that. Marcelo Zuna was that guy for you. And Aaron Bummer, obviously, you know what he was able to do this year. You know what, seven point two million, I believe his option is. So yep. when you think about it from that aspect, yeah, pick it up. Yeah, yep. And, and those guys have been, you know, so solid for you this year. They came through for you this year when mm-hmm. you needed them. So I don't see any reason for for them not to pick pick those options up because here's the thing I, I think one of the things that i find interesting about alex anthopolis is just just overall with all of these decisions and having to make decisions that i feel like one thing i've always respected about alex is that when he, you know he was being asked about you know who's going to be you know are you going to try to trade you know jorge soler or are you going to try to trade orlando arcia and all that stuff yeah, he was like yeah you know, I can't sit up. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that I'm going to trade a player because guess what? Those things, those things, if I decide to do that, if those situations comes about, I'm going to have a conversation with the player first before yeah. you all even know anything about it. And I'm just like, man, you got to respect that so yeah. much because he was very honest about how Orlando RC has played. He didn't play that well. And, you know, he, hey, he, he, he wasn't expected to be in that fifth hole, you know, right. uh, trying being counted on to drive yeah. in runs and all that stuff and, and, and protect guys in, in the bottom of the lineup. He, he's a bottom of the lineup guy. That's where he that's how he made the all star. Um, um, that's how he made all star back in 2023. So you when you think about it from that aspect and, and just hearing him talk and hearing him talk about guys and how straightforward and honest he wants to be with the player first, uh, it just lets you know that. 
more than likely, if a situation comes about, he's going to make the move. But mm -hmm. you guys won't hear about it first. The player is going to hear it first. He's going to have a conversation with him. And, and I think that, you know, even though that might not be the situation where Orlando wants, yeah. he'll respect the fact that, hey, you're not hearing, hearing it through the grapevine or on social media because, you know, Lord knows how that the feeling of that, you know, could, how that can be, you know, when you're in that situation. And I think that mm -hmm. Alex Anthopoulos has always been a, a stand up guy when it comes to that, that, that situation. Yeah. And I would second the emotion on Marcelo Zuna. I mean, there is absolutely no way that you get rid of that guy. I think that we have already had that conversation all throughout 2023 until lo and behold, or I'd say the, the beginning of 2023, yeah, and beginning, lo and yeah. showed himself to be quite valuable and made all of us eat crow. For what yes. we all said about Alex Anthopoulos and Brian Snicker parting ways because Brian Snicker has been such a strong supporter and advocate for Marcelo Zuna. But yes, this season alone, if nothing else, this guy through almost 162 games, maybe at about a 13 game slump. But other than that, he literally he was your MVP for your team and was even in the MVP conversation for the National League overall because of what he was able to do at the plate. So because of all those times that we saw the swoons at the plate and those bats go cold, except for that one bat, you got to keep him there. And as you said, with Travis Darno, he is another one who was a steady Eddie. And there was a time, like even through the swoon that we saw with Marcelo Zuna and come on now, you mentioned it, Sean Murphy. Yeah. He just was <laughs> never right when we saw him come back from that injury. And Travis Darno, whether it was at the plate or even behind the plate calling great games for this pitching rotation, you got to appreciate what he was able to bring to the table. And again, you've got a lefty relief pitcher and Aaron Bummer, who was solid, not going to take you a whole lot to exercise his option. 7.25. You're good to go there. So yeah, I see no reason not to bring them back and help the Braves to be legitimate world series contenders in 25, which I think we both believe they'll be. Yeah, they have, they have to be because, because the only thing that held them back from being serious world series contenders was injuries and 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 i think that you know a lot of times when you think about going into offseason with team not just you know baseball the, with the braves but just teams and in, in professional teams in general you kind of diagnose what you need or what is the big thing that you need what's the prior what you're going to prioritize and and, mm -hmm. and when you hear a general manager of that team the braves alex anthopolis say hey we're gonna kind of you know see how things go, play it out. You know, we're going to make sure that our guys are healthy. And yeah. then if something comes about, we're going to take a look at it. You know, so we're going to try to get better. Yeah. And when you say things like that, you're not saying, oh, we need a number of ace. We need an ace. We need a, uh, we need a bat. Like when you hear a team say, say uh, a general manager say something like that, that lets you know that their roster is ready right yeah. now as of today if mm -hmm. everybody comes back you know fully healthy and everything and you can get at least 140 games or 130 games of, of, of your of that starting lineup for the Braves team yeah it's going to be something real and you know the last time we saw that it, it was historic yeah. <laughs> not great it was historic you know we've never seen anything like that before so yeah I, I feel I wholeheartedly feel like this is a team that's going to contend and mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what the Alex Anthopoulos move is going to be this year because the man went out and traded for a Cy Young winner. Yeah. <laughs> Let that sink in, T. Let it, exactly. <laughs> and, right, and I know even he wasn't expecting Chris Sale to be that Chris Sale, but he did see something in Chris Sale that said he could contribute to sure. this staff. And, and I agree. The Braves were unabashed about saying that 2024 was World Series or bust. Unfortunately, it was bust, but not – for lack of effort. It was all about all the circumstances with injuries that they had to deal with. So I don't expect them to come back with anything less than that same attitude for 2025. But hey, before we wrap up, got to just ask a little petty question of Petty Monger. We know there are still playoff games going on, even if the A has turned them off and turned away all the way. But an interesting little matchup going on and a little duel between the Mets and the Phillies. So with the Petty and you, Prefer the Mets to move on or the Phillies to move on? Who said that? Oh my gosh! Oh, <laughs> this is oh, this is such a hard question. Goodness gracious! <laughs> All right, okay. So here, here, here's the thing. I, and hopefully, hopefully, you can follow me too. 
on this one. Yeah. The Mets have been so lowly. They're just like the little brother. Like, yeah. oh, little like, brother get out of here. Oh, go, oh, yeah. Oh, you are you are you winning division by eight games, nine games? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll come back in. You know, yeah, we'll figure that out. You know, but but the Phillies don't T. This thing goes back some because the Mets have been they've been putrid. You know, they're they've been non existent in my eyes. They haven't even been on my right, radar. Right. Yeah, right. You know, as in my existence, as a as a 42-year-old my man, the Mets don't mean anything to me, to be honest with you. Like on the, my first memory of the Met, Darryl Strawberry. That was late 80s. So yeah, let's yeah. Let's, let's, let's put that in perspective. So they have been non-existent, but the Phillies, the disdain that I've had for this team. Yes, yes. Lenny Dykstra, Darren oh, Dunn, oh, you go. Okay, you're okay. Don wait. Crook. You wow. know, this thing goes back with me. Oh, it goes back for you. So, yeah. When I say that I, I'm not a Met, I'm not gonna say I'm a Mets fan, but oh my gosh, I would love for the Mets to get them folks up out of there because yeah. guess what the the Phillies right now on their roster they got so many guys that just have punchable faces, they just have so many guys, Bryce Harper, Nick Castellanos, I just, I just, Aaron Nola, yeah, just punchable, just so punchable, so yeah. I hope the Mets figure out a way to get this doggone thing done because I would despise because yeah. Philadelphia they just not, aren't likable. Like well, the teams, yeah. the They're fans, so it's just annoying as crap. And I'm yeah. waiting to send that tweet T. If the Mets were able to pull it off, you know I'm who you know oh, yeah. who I'm team. No question. Yeah. You know no question. Oh, no question. Oh yeah. You know they just des- deservedly so. Yes. Because I mean, <laughs> it's one, right? And it's one thing to like for the Mets because the net the Mets did knock the Braves out of the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. So at any time, not not to get to the postseason this year because they split the series, and so therefore they both went right. But the yeah. Phillies has been that nemesis for the Braves these last couple of seasons. The Braves unfortunately won't get a crack at them for a third year in a row. So right. if the Braves can't get a crack at them. Hey, look, yeah, for, for this season alone, I'm going to root for the Mets because I want somebody to take them now. Because like I said, I feel like they're very smug and they have been the bane of the Braves existence. Then we can come back in 2025. And I absolutely believe that the Braves are going to exact the revenge that they'd hoped to exact in 2024. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to be rooting for the folks in Queens for at least another hopefully week or so, because that's just the petty things that we do on the baseball. Party. Thanks to our everydayers for making the Atlanta baseball party your first listen of the day. Be sure to stop by Locked On Braves for your second listen, and be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also free and available wherever you download your podcast. We'll see you on the Atlanta Sports Party Thursday.